crosses all around your house. Really, it's gonna get into position. I need some cover here, Donnie. Smoke the door. We got a fire. This will be our next customer right here. Please, They decide to hurt themselves. Well, I want to see a search one. You're not going to, because there isn't one. Why are you stopping? I mean, you drove up to it. You crashed. Right now, you're under arrest for being an idiot, OK? Do you mind? We don't need to be on the news. The most people that we're dealing with tonight are like yourself. You're very pro-police. This program contains actual police footage. No reporters, no recreations. What you've got here is uh, some examples of the common street drugs that we deal with. And uh, I'll just go through uh, some of them. Uh, this is called an eight ball of cocaine. It's 3.5 grams or one eighth of an ounce. That's the most common uh, bulk size that is sold in. Uh, sold in a small package like that uh, to a user uh, who would then uh, break off pieces as required uh, for their own personal habit. Or sometimes the users will break this eight ball down further into smaller packages and then continue to sell those packages uh, for an additional profit. Some of the ways that uh, the larger quantities are broken down is uh, a small quantity be put into uh, a paper deck. Here's an example of a professional deck that tells you how to fold it. It's just basically a, a two inch square of paper folded in a, in a intricate fashion to form a small deck square piece of paper like this. In this deck is either a quarter or a half a gram of cocaine uh, and then that's sold on the street uh, for approximately fifty dollars for the half gram in that fashion. Another method of packaging the cocaine uh, that's became quite common here in Vancouver is the small plastic wrap balls. Uh, again, it's usually an eighth of a gram to possibly a little less than half a gram of cocaine placed in a small piece of plastic. The plastic's then wrapped up in a ball, tied at the top, usually with dental floss or some other fashion, and then the uh, package is sold to the customer uh, in that fashion, usually for about $20, $25 for about an eighth of a gram, uh, slightly more if it's a slightly larger package wrap ball. They're easily concealable. Uh, they're easily disposed of uh, by having it in a plastic package like this or uh, wrapped up in some sort of package like that. Common method of uh, transportation is carrying it in the mouth. Uh, two reasons for that. Uh, you can quickly swallow it if you're approached by the police and it's easy to get rid of in that fashion. Uh, as a result, uh, we have to be extra careful to uh, uh, apprehend these people and prevent them from disposing of the evidence. Spit it out, Chap. Spit it. Get it out. I saw it. Spit out. Spit out the coke. Come on, Chap. Spit it out. I'm going to plug his nose on. Yeah, I see. What's that? Yeah, I got a deck so far. He's got a spitball in there. He's got a spitball in there. Hey, come on, spit it out, Chap. Come on, is it really worth it? Hey, is that that little area? Open up. Stay off. Spitball right there. Right there. Right there. You got it? Spit it out. Spit it out. Come on. We know it's there. You're not going to swallow it. I guarantee it. Hang now on, spit hang it out. On, okay. You got one here. You got one. You got it again, okay? Okay, don't move. Don't Open move. Open your mouth. I'll push Open. it out. Come on. Yeah. Move. Don't move. What you doing? Don't hide it. Don't hide it. Don't hide it. There it is. Got it. Got it. Got okay. it. Okay. <laughs> we win, you lose. Just Just hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, guys. Paper and uh, here. here. Let me clean that. I got it. I got it. Hey, bro. Somebody give me a plastic thing. Give me your arm. I got it. I got it. Clean your feet. Like a Chinese acrobat. That's the guy I ran right by us. Of course you don't got dick because I got it now. Like, hey, listen to me. You're under arrest for possession of cocaine and maybe heroin too, okay? Listen to me. Hey. Can't hear you, my ears clogged. Hold on. Hey, hold on. Hey, 
Relax. It's over. It's over, Jim. You lose, we win. A lot of the drug addicts will put the narcotics in their mouth and try to swallow it to get rid of the evidence. We try to discourage from doing that because the only way we've got to stop them from swallowing the evidence is basically putting a chokehold on them and uh, prevent them from swallowing. And it's kind of a messy business because we're trying to uh, get the drugs back and they're trying to get them down their throat. And as a result, we end up in these types of uh, battles uh, basically to preserve the evidence. I hope I got AIDS, but you do now. Have you got AIDS? Well, yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so do you. Oh. Are you got AIDS confirmed? Thank What? First comment was, I hope I have AIDS, because now you do. And the second oh. comment was, I have AIDS. Oh, okay. <coughs> what we had here is we just came across a couple of the uniformed beat men who uh, were attempting to arrest uh, an individual who had uh, spit balls, plastic uh, wrapped balls of cocaine in his mouth. Uh, they grabbed him by the throat to prevent him swallowing it, had him on the ground and were wrestling with him. Uh, the object was to get the uh, drug out of his mouth before he could swallow it. Having just come upon this, we just came in and gave him assistance in uh, securing the guy and holding him down, removing the cocaine from his mouth, uh, and then putting him into proper custody, which he is now. At the present time, they're going to deal with him, and he's uh, still quite anxious, and uh, he'll be processed and dealt with uh, in a normal fashion. It's not a straight nine to five job, there's shift work, which I, I don't mind at all. Uh, it's just the excitement, there's something a little bit different every day. Female in front of his residence crying, she appears to be in some kind of distress. And I've just received a message stating that the female has appeared to collapse, has collapsed, EHS is under its control. Please contact the emergency services at 1800 1800 Okay, what uh, seems to be the problem here? Um, I don't know at this point here. We don't know if she's, she appears that she's possibly taking some drugs next to her neighbors. Uh, just found her walking around. No one seems to be uh, confused what's been going on. There's possibly a party going over here. And we don't know if, uh, Possible drug overdose. Do the next door neighbors know her? No, I don't. They don't know her? They've never seen her before. Okay. They, she ended up coming walking up on their uh, property and then just... Will she give you any information at all? Uh, the name is Violet. This is what we got Violet? Yeah. Did somebody hit you? Does she have any identification? No identification whatsoever. Violet. Any marks? Eyes, no marks, no bracelets. No blood, nothing, eh? No blood, no nothing. What are uh, her pupils look like? They, they're equal and reactive. Uh, she, there's some, there is some alcohol on her breath. There is, but eh? She's just given us the appearance that she might have your eyes. taken some sort of drug. Okay, I'm going to talk to the neighbors. Uh, you're going to transport shortly? Yeah, we're going to be taking, we just got in here, we're going to kick off in a couple seconds. Okay, so I'm going to talk to the neighbors, find out where she's from, what, what the story is uh, with her. Okay. okay, I'll talk to you guys in a second. You don't leave before you talk to me unless she gets worse. Uh, you bet. Thanks. Sir, yeah. do you know this lady at all? No, have you ever seen her before? No, you never have? She's never showed up at the door before? No, okay. Uh, can you speak her, her language, do you oh. think? No, no. No? No. What nationality do you think she is? She looks like Native Indian. Native Indian, eh? Okay, no problem. All right, we'll, uh, we'll look into it. We'll make sure yeah, she gets to the hospital. Was, uh, I heard somebody, she said, I'm lying here. Please help me, please yeah. help me. Did she say? I, I came to lock my car. Did she say what the problem was? Mm, no, she asked me a little. She was staggering around here. Yeah. Okay. Did she get here drunk here? Yeah, it's not. Right. It's not. Right. Besides Violet, we can't get anything else out of her. her. Chances are uh, she may have just been intoxicated, may have mixed yeah. a little drugs. Actually, I'm, I'm going to say more drugs. All right. Yeah, she just she's got that look about her. She Any marks on her arms? No marks on her arms. No. Okay, we'll uh, we'll follow you to Surrey Memorial Hospital and see if we can find out a little bit more. I just want to make sure there's no criminal uh, activities involved. If it's straight overdose. She doesn't want to seem to tell us much. She doesn't, eh? Yeah, she's asking us why we want to know these things. She's pretty uh, mum's the worst. Right, right? I'll leave my car at the hospital. I'll see you at the okay. hospital. Yeah. Thanks for the call, Mr. Ford. We just, we just found out it was a white powder that she may have taken. She's admitted to cocaine, eh? Sounds like it, yeah. It's bad stuff. Yeah, terrible. Okay, see you at the hospital. Yeah.
She uh, wandered around one neighbor's yard, and the neighbor never bothered to call us. And the second neighbor, who was out in the yard, had enough sense to give us a call. She was asking for help. I just want to make sure there's no um, nothing involved that she wasn't beat up or, or, or forced to, to take drugs and stuff like that. I want to make sure it's basically totally natural. And if there is drugs on her, then she'd be looking at a, a charge of uh, possession of a narcotic. It just looks like a little bit of cocaine overdose. Oh, it's hard to say. Really. It sounds like it's possible. All right. How is she? Is she coming too? Yeah. Good. So she's able to tell you who she is. And... Yeah, we got we got a name and stuff on her. So. Okay. Where do you put? On uh, 18. 18. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, they're just they're just dealing with her right now and getting her ready, so we'll give them a little peace and quiet. Oh, hey, 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 hey. relax. Okay, Violet, you're under arrest for being intoxicated in a public place, okay? No, come on. George, get away. Yeah, get Okay, Violet. You're under arrest for being intoxicated in a public place. You have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay. Let go. Let go, Violet. 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 Okay, that's it. You want security or are you all right? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, Violet, you understand why you're under arrest? All right? You're going back to jail. You can call a lawyer when we get back there, okay? All right. Did you get her last name? Nope. No, they have it up. Maybe she, she wouldn't give it, eh? No. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, Violet. You're not obliged to say anything to me, but anything you do say may be given in evidence. You understand? Yeah. What we're going to do is a uh, hospital. You're not cooperative with them. Mm -hmm. so we're going to take you back. You're going to go to jail. And, and when, you're, when you're sober in the morning, then. we're going to let you go. Okay? And. No charges. And why are they there? The well, you weren't being very cooperative with them. Tell me why the Watch your souls are were there. Well, they're there to help you, and you uh, refuse their help. Do you understand? Okay, I'm going to get them tomorrow. Well, you can do what you want. Problem. How much have you had drink tonight, Violet? It's none of your business. It's none of anybody's business. Well, it is my business. You guys don't even know how to take care of a person, yes, do you guys? Watch your head. Even when they could get raped, right? Well, we're talking about that when we get back. No, you guys don't even help me. It's the same old story that Surrey Memorial deals with people like this all the time. They're brought in, they, uh, they become very belligerent and sometimes very violent towards the staff there. And, and in turn, we're called. That was maybe a good thing that we are just, we just there and followed the ambulance in. Because we would have been called back regardless. Can you tell me how much cocaine you did tonight? Okay, you told the ambulance attendant that you did do some. You did two lines three hours ago? Yes. All right, and how many, how many beers did you have? Two. All right. Not alcohol. No, nope. nobody said that when we uh, get this intoxicated person back to the jail cells, she'll act one of two ways. Uh, she'll either be very uh, cooperative and quiet and polite, or she'll be very violent and she'll resist and she'll want to fight. And uh, if I don't miss my guess, if I'm not mistaken, I, I'll say, uh, I'll put my money on that uh, she's going to be a fighter. Okay, uh, I want you to be cooperative, okay? Why am I in here? You're in here till you sober up. I am sober. Well, you're not, you're not, so, you're not sober enough. How's that? I mean I'm not sober. We have an intoxicated female, both I with drugs and with alcohol. Anything. No, but you've had a bit too much drink tonight. I haven't done anything. I was just going home. What's the problem? Give me a break, okay? Hey, 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 there's a lady standing here. Watch your language. What lady? I don't there's see any. There's one right any, across here. I don't see any ladies around here. Ladies don't. Don't swear, right? Yeah. Right, so don't swear. Ladies don't swear, so what's your problem? Tell me what your address is. None of your business. Do you have a date of birth? No, I don't. All right, we're going to put you in jail, Violet, okay? Go ahead. You'll be released in the morning when you're sober after you give us some information. Well, I'm not going to be sober. I'm not going to be right because you will be sober this in the morning. is not right. Violet. Because this, I have no business. 
leave mine for a while. I will. Okay, well, tell you what we're going to do. You guys have no business You're right. in doing this to me, so especially so when so the so man is the one that's been assaulting me. Well, we'll be more than happy to listen to you in the morning if you yeah, want to report an assault. don't give a f oh, f oh. A man has assaulted me and you guys don't even think about Well, that. listen, if you want to report right? an assault, I'll investigate no, it for you. you guys you. don't give a f well, just a minute. Yeah, I want her search too. If she touches me, I'm gonna kill her. Well, you're not gonna do that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you search her. Just watch your feet. Yep, watch my feet. Watch my feet because I'm good with it. I'm just checking your clothes. I'm not checking anything else. You. That's yeah. enough. That's enough. I want to for this. You <laughs> because this Go ahead. is no Search. business of you guys. Because there's no reason to do this to me. Because there was a man that came against me and violated my fucking body. Violent. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Violet, just take it easy. You. Just don't just it. grab my hair. Just take it easy. Dude, I'm mad at me. Don't you grab my hair, you Mikey, Mikey. I can't take these things off. She ever bites. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. Have a nice night, okay? I think you better do the favor to charge us for the salt on that bike. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Did she break your skin? Oh, yeah, she got me a good one. You got some stuff for that? Yeah, she broke some of it, but she bit through my pants. Jeez. 13 years of police work, that's the first time I've been bitten. Got you oh yeah, she got, me, she got me a good one. When was the last time you had a tetanus shot? A couple years ago. I'm more worried about the other diseases. Well, yes, no, I realize. <laughs> you know, live with tetanus. Did she go through your pants, though? She, uh, no, she, yeah, she broke the skin. Yeah, but... Your pants was in between her mouth. But yeah, the pants was in between, uh, so, so it, it probably saved. Uh, yeah, RTCC for her. Oh, uh, no, she's uh, staying right where she is. Okay, uh, Jeff, beam me out of here. <laughs> what did I tell you? Yeah. She'd either be cooperative or violent. She chose to be violent. We have a uh, good idea to photograph that, though, that bruise on my leg, so I get her for salt peel. Do you want, uh, do you want I think? We get Do you have chloride? Yeah, if you would, please. What we did was, for her own protection, we arrested her for uh, being drunk in a public place. So we get her back here in cells, and I told her that she'd be staying with us till she was sober. And she didn't like that idea too much. So when we book, booked her in cells, she became violent. We wanted to get the handcuffs off her. Once the handcuffs were attempting to be removed, that's when she locked onto my leg and uh, bit into it. So now. Instead of just being released when she's sober in the morning, she'll be served a promise to appear and she'll be charged for assaulting a police officer. So what started as nothing for her is going to end up in a court appearance for her. So she's the author of her own misfortunes. Can I just leave these with you, yeah. Jeff? You mark these, date, time, and initial, uh, and this will uh, then become an exhibit and evidence in court. 
you're uh, concentrating on taking the handcuffs off her, that's your first thing. The other people are restraining her, that's, that's their job. And uh, as, soon as, she, as soon as I saw her head moving in that direction, I, I knew it was coming down, but I, I couldn't get out of there on time. And the first thing you feel is her teeth going into your, your leg. But the, the first thing that really concerns you the most is uh, whether she's infectious. Um, and that's what bothered me most of, her, of all. And that just runs through your head. So probably later on, I'll, uh, when it quiets down, I'll run up to the hospital and see what they have to say about it and let them look at it. But uh, for the time being, uh, you just gotta kinda live with that. It's part of the job. And it's uh, one of the sides of the jobs that uh, nobody appreciates. <laughs> You ran the red light back there. Oh, damn. Well, it was red, in my opinion, by the time you went through it. Yeah, whatever. And secondly, um, you have no lights on, or no tail lights anyway. What? Oh. So no tail lights. Are your dash lights working? Yeah, the dash lights are on. You have a driver's license handy? Yeah. That's weird. Oh, so that's what drew my attention to you to begin with. Oh, I thought they were working. That's really weird. Oh. Where's he coming from, sir? Uh, just from my uncle's house. You haven't had anything to drink tonight? Oh, I had about three beers, that's about it. Uh, you look like you're all right. Pardon me? You look all right. You yeah, just no, had three no. throughout the whole well, evening. from about 7 o'clock till now, yeah. Sure. You still own the Surrey, sir? Yep. Do you have a Harley? Uh, yep. Is that right? In Independent? Yep. Okay. What I suggest you get those fixed. There's a gas station, 96 and uh, 128 there. Pull in there, get a new fuse for your lights before you continue. Okay. And you come to a light if you can stop it. Can I go to the one up here? Yeah, whatever one you feel okay. more comfortable yeah. with, okay. okay? No problem. Okay? Oh, I just gotta just check the fuse on it. Check the fuse and put, uh, yeah. so you have some tail lights. Somebody ran into you. In there, so. Okay. Good night. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Well, this is some type of domestic dispute between two brothers. Uh, one brother's come home uh, extremely intoxicated, and the other brother has ran out of the house. Three, and he's worried uh, that he's going to get beat up. So, of course, he phones the police and we'll go see if we can straighten this problem out for him. Uh, what uh, seems to be the problem with your brother tonight? He's drunk. He's drunk again, that's all. And he booted your front door? Well, he come back here looking for something to beat up on some guys with. He wanted my crossbows, this, that, and the other thing. I told him to get it, forget it, get out of here. How long, did your brother get a hold of a crowbar or something? Uh, not that I know of. What's your brother's last name? Same as yours? Oh, yeah, Colin. Bravo 20. Bravo 20 is 10? Yeah. Bravo 20 from Portable, Constable 10. We may have your brother What's already. He look like? Tall, skinny guy, looks Indian. That's it. Yeah. Long, long black hair. 10 4. We're on a complaint that he kicked his brother's door in. Thanks a lot, Rob. Uh, Constable Menard will be in touch with you shortly. Okay, you'll be happy to know we have your brother in custody right now. Good. Keep All right. Him there. He's under arrest for being drunk in public place. Yeah. He'll be released in the morning when he's well, sober. Hey. What? Yeah, you know, he's going to pay for this too. Well, you can have a chat with him tomorrow, and you can make arrangements for him I to pay. Just pay. Him stay where he is for you know. Well, he's not but going. That's, yeah, he's, he's not, not going until yeah. tomorrow morning. He's not going anywhere tonight. Okay, no we've got rid of the problem for you. Temporarily. And, oh, of course. Okay. It's always a band-aid yeah. solution, isn't yeah. it? All right, so. Um, you're left to fix your door now. Yeah, like okay. I was doing just as I seen you pull up. Okay. Exactly. Have All right. Good night. Good night, sir. Good All morning. Right. Yeah, good morning. We'll see you later. Well, hopefully not tonight. Okay, we'll be there within uh, two minutes. Is this the mail passed out in the washroom? Bravo 10, does it have to do with the original call down there? She's asking for coverage, so there's probably a problem down at the... 411, it does. We, had, we were called earlier to a man pass on the ladies' washroom at the Turf Hotel. However, we were canceled, and now we're, uh, we're re-attending, so we're not exactly sure what's happening down there. Probably the mail came back and is causing a problem, and the uh, staff at the Turf Hotel are asking for the police. Back in that uh, file back there, the gentleman was uh, afraid of his brother coming back drunk and kicking his door in again. That's why he called us. But what happened was we initially were going to be attending as backup to uh, Constable Tan's file, a man with a crowbar at the Dell Hotel looking for trouble. And sure enough, that was the, this guy's brother. Both uh, files were related. The 
guy is now in custody, he's in jail, and uh, he's our guest for the night. Drunk in a public place, and he'll be released in the morning when he's sober. And that's so often the case, so we get one call and then another one comes in and they're, they're related. Had uh, we not got this guy originally at the Dell Hotel, there's no, no telling what type of trouble he would have got himself into tonight. Randy, how you doing? Looks like he hasn't been feeling too well. No, nope. left turn for you. 43 LCLA? Yes. We know. We know. You, uh, this is the gentleman here that was uh, found passed out in the washroom, the ladies' washroom no, no, at the, uh, at the uh, Turf Hotel where we are now. <laughs> and you can see from the marks on his arms and blood from his nose, he's been nice scrapped. Get this shit down off. Uh, Cameras are all up. Well, it's part of the job, sir. Watch your head. Watch your head getting in there. Never mind. Watch your head. I'll take that camera and jump. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Save your thrust for somebody who cares. Did he give you a hard time in there, Rob? No, no, he's just cleaning himself up. In the ladies' washroom. Well, what happened when I get here, they just canceled me because uh, they woke him up. He didn't uh -huh. want to go with the ambulance. And, uh, he was going to walk home, and he came back and started uh, bugging the ladies again. So, uh, so it was just what we thought. He left, and then we were canceled, and he came back came and back. started started procrastinating again. So that's when I decided he should probably come with me. That's a good idea. There'll be one less problem for us to handle tonight. Uh, Tan just got the guy with the crowbar, and uh, it was related to Constable Menard's file, yeah, the brother kicking in the door. So what's next? Let's go get some more bad guys. Call comes up. You don't know. Uh, you don't know what to expect, and that's that's what keeps it interesting. Careful out there. Options here. Watch yourself. Maybe we should go back a bit. <laughs> Cover the head. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Well, most of the kids are of age. Yeah. Um, we could bring back the paddy wagon. 
The owner of the house is, uh, isn't there right now. Okay. They, they want to identify who's there. The girl says she stays there, but the owner of the house, the guy who actually owns it, he's not there right now. Okay. See? Yeah. So. Well, we're going to be, uh, you know... Let's pull back. Let's pull back here for now, and then we'll see what we can do in a bit. Get the van coming up. The van oh, up. Yeah. yeah, we'll make arrangements to get the van up, and uh, we'll start from there. a wee bit. Yep. Yeah. Protect my car here. neighborhood then it's my business okay, what's happening yeah, but, but it doesn't stop I'm coming back with the paddy wagon okay. in fact I'm bringing it up here now you're coming back right away well yeah, I'm listen I'm just telling you I'm bringing the paddy wagon up right now I'm putting it in place so that if I have to me like so listen so that if I have to come back you'll come back then there's people going with me seriously you're not here to cause trouble is that for to serve and protect or whatever that show. So listen, so now you know, but if I, if you see me coming down here again, okay, you're going to get the paddy wagon, That's right? what I'm done to do. Yeah. You're going to go do that and right come back? That's it. Okay. If there's any person lawful use enjoyment or operation off their property, so it's the enjoyment and lawful use. 431B. 431. So the and Crown will go on and on on the on repeat offenders, where they're blatant disregard for the peace and tranquility of the neighborhood. So that's what we go with. Good. The calls are continuing to come in on the house party we, we attended earlier tonight on 140th Street. So what we plan to do is we're going back as I told them with the with the paddy wagon and um, with some more with some more members to uh, to let them know that uh, I meant what I said and uh, we'll go from there. Hi, are you Daisy? You're the girl? Stand under here if you don't mind. Where's um, you live here by yourself? No. Okay, who who owns the house? My parents. Your parents own the house. Yeah. And they're are they home tonight? No. Do they know you're having a party? No, they don't. They don't. I wasn't even having a party, and people told everybody that I was having a party. And they came crash my house. Okay. Where were you when I came here earlier tonight? I was here about uh, maybe an hour ago. Where? I was at the store. I, I was so mad. <laughs> I was telling everybody to get out of my house, nobody get out of my house, mm -hmm. and then I just went away. I started kicking everybody out, nobody would leave, and then finally everybody left, because there's like major people here, right? Mm -hmm. And then I said, everybody leave, leave my house now, I don't want you here, I do not want you here, I'm cleaning up my house, and then everybody left, and then people stay behind and help me clean up. Well, I'll tell you what. You got the noise, you got the back windows open, the back doors open. All these people living around behind haven't been able to sleep. And, I know. Well, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I know, I'm sorry. Well, I am, I'm sorry. Well, they're sorry too, and they're the ones that can't sleep. I know sleep. they're sorry too. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. Listen, close the windows. Okay, all these neighbors back here are complaining. What's the, um, like, dust uh, to light? Is that the sound, sound barrier thing in the summertime? Um, that's a working bylaw. But you have to, it's reasonable hours. That's what it is. Everybody out? That's it? Everybody's gone? Okay. Yeah. Like, No, just a street check. Well, first of all, prostitution is illegal. You know that. Excuse me? Prostitution yes. is illegal if you ask, you require money? Yes, I know that. No, you wouldn't be doing that, would you? No. 
I didn't think so. Angel part five. <laughs> Angel does. Height three. and weight, please. Sorry, I'm one, 172, five, six. You're five, six? Yeah. I got a whole other smoke. What do you weigh? 172. Just in case one of us comes up missing or something. Well, we like to find out who's working the, uh, the strip. Who's waiting at the bus stop? Waiting for, for a bus. bus. Oh, I, I'm sure that's what you're doing. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Apolog I apologize. You're on camera! Yeah! <laughs> Color your eyes? Purple. Blue. <laughs> well, today the they're girls purple. aren't wired tonight, are you? No, I don't know. I don't do drugs. Good. You know, it's so funny. Every prostitute I've spoken to on the strip, and it's got to be 50 to 100 of them, none of them touch drugs. That's remarkable, no, isn't it? I don't. I'm an athlete. You're what? I'm an athlete. You're an athlete. Yeah, I run 100 miles every day. I'm sure you do. 100 miles every day. <laughs> Where were you born? What province? BC. BC. Spy, our camera. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give you your sunburn. Smile, baby. I got one. Smile, you're a camera, honey. <laughs> about all the good things and the bad things See, that made You girls are uh, wasting your time being prostitutes. You should be singers. We're not. We're, we're, we're <laughs> waiting for the bus. bus. That's right. You it's should not be. This, hey, this bus take me to the studio. You should yeah. not be professional bus waiter for us. <laughs> we are. I'm Mrs. Jackson. Smile, you're a 21 of the street. <laughs> yeah. 21 of the street. Keep going, boys. Hi. Keep going. <laughs> Your date of birth? 07, 07, 71. Huh? 07, 07, 71. How tall 10. are you? 5'5". Uh, oh, you are. <laughs> Your weight? <laughs> Does that have to be the truth or what? Yeah. Well, let me guess at 110, 110 pounds. Oh, I love you, man. <laughs> no, don't touch. I love, oh, don't touch. <laughs> You're joining us. Yo, baby. You're on camera. Okay. Keep um, on going. A little word to the wise. Yes, sir. And behave yourselves out here. We are. And we're yet, for the bus, the bus other people. The girls have spotters. I just excuse me. The girls have spotters. No, the bus is coming in like 20 minutes. The bus is coming. Hi, honey. Right. Do I not wait for the bus every day? Excuse You're a witness. He works right there, and I send the same bus, bus. every day. What do you yeah. have in your purse? What do I have in my purse? Uh, lots of things. Let's take a quick little look. Seven for text. <laughs> papers, 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 more papers, more papers, more papers. The ID. other part. The other part of the purse. The other part. The other part. Oh. You carry ID on you? Uh, yeah, I do. You want it? Let's just let's just take a quick look at your ID, please. <laughs> okay, no me. drugs tonight, no, I don't do drugs. I swear to God, you can even take blood tests or hair tests. No, I'm not interested. <laughs> or hair your hair? No, they do. They take. Find his hair they do. They take hair tests. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta take. <laughs> let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk How long have uh, you been at this uh, business for? Waiting for buses. How long have I been waiting for buses for? Oh, well. Uh, when, when did you buy the bus? Four or five months ago. Four or five Sorry. months? How about you? Firing soon. Uh -oh. We've been waiting for the bus for about four months. Four months? <laughs> 19 years. 19 years? Are you serious? Yeah. You, you know, what, white man, what you made you get into this? better bus transit out here. I'm like, been waiting for the bus. It's transportation. Oh, I, I realize that. <laughs> public. <laughs> That's right. It goes 100 miles So, how long have you been involved in serving the public for? How long have I been taking the public transportation for? Uh, five months. <laughs> five months. 19 years. But they, you know, that sky train slows everything down. I guess you could say I'm a veteran bus rider. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> we certainly can't support your uh, your business, but at least be careful. Oh, always. All right? Always. Those bus drivers, we always, families. you know, we body build, we make sure that no one gets past us. I used to be a wrestler. Bus. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, I wasn't. All right, ladies. No, never. Good night. Yes, sir. Well, you're welcome. See ya! Hey, come well, on. Too many. I'll give him a shake. <laughs> what we've got here is an example of a buff. This is one pound of glucose that can be purchased uh, probably in any drugstore or drug supply store. Uh, this particular one is $2.89, so it's very inexpensive. As you can see uh, on this sample here, it's a fine white powder, uh, very similar to uh, either cocaine or heroin. Uh, it's used to uh, mix with uh, the pure cocaine or heroin to one cut its percentage so it's not as strong. In the example of heroin, uh, you'd mix uh, 
four to one. So you'd mix uh, four ounces of buff to one ounce of heroin, and uh, you would end up with five ounces. So you'd uh, have a considerably larger bulk to sell. In the case of cocaine, it's uh, normally cut uh, a lot less, perhaps uh, one to one. So it, uh, it's uh, less strength, but you double the amount of uh, actual drug you've got for sale and increase your profits. Uh, and it looks very similar to the, uh, the cocaine or drug itself. In uh, the mixing process, uh, what's quite often used, uh, first of all, to mix uh, the uh, drugs together is uh, these types of scales here, and we've got an example of uh, three different kinds. Uh, the electronic scale here, uh, what will happen to balance the scale is you can throw a bill on it, and it weighs, as you can see on the scale, exactly one gram. Uh, you can then use that to balance your scales. Uh, you then add a gram or two or three or four or how much ever buff you're going to add to your uh, initial drug mix, add it together and then package that as uh, uh, for sale. Uh, so when we're looking for possession for the purpose of trafficking, we're always looking for scales of this nature. Um, buff, uh, as we've seen here, is glucose. And uh, from that, we use that type of evidence to uh, show the courts that this person is not only using the drugs for his personal use, but that he's uh, packaging them and cutting them down and putting them into a, a situation where he would actually be going to sell those drugs on the street. And this is part of the paraphernalia we use to uh, uh, show the courts that a purpose uh, that the person is preparing uh, drugs uh, for trafficking uh, and we've just arrested him before he's actually gone out to traffic them. He met up with a dealer in front of the, the billiard hall and they've walked about a block and a half now to a different point. The dealer, the dealer called his connection to meet them up here at Gore and uh, Pender. The undercover operator is radioing us, telling us where he's going. Now we're just going to follow them and arrest him when the deal occurs. Just going into the lane. Uh, around the corner to get it. Blocked by a bus. I'll be driving by in a sec. Nothing like it. Okay, he's crossed to the north side of the lane behind a pole there. If you can park right there, who's ever than Camaro, I'll block him for you. Uh, when we saw him, he had a white top on. Thank you. <laughs> I think he's making the cocaine up behind the dumpster. I think he's going to rip us, is what I think is happening. It, sometimes it'll happen is. Um, if the person doesn't have any, he'll make some up, he'll use gyp rock, a piece of concrete, put it in the usual paper, and then uh, bring it back and pass it off as cocaine, and take your money and rip you off that way. And I think that's what this fellow's doing right now, making it up. Okay, uh, I already completed. did his buy, thanks. Anderson is not normal, just the kid in the purple hat. Mike. The money, Mike. The kid in the purple hat has the money. Where's all your money? Do you use drugs? Yeah. Well, who am I talking to? Let me get a pair of handcuffs. Yeah. Oh, you make money at all? Oh, okay. Yeah. The same? You're too cooking, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> no money at all? What do you use? There one? Track marks there, Mike? Yeah. Come on, I can talk to you in the rest of them. Well, I've got a toilet in there. Yeah. Yeah. You got no money, huh? Where are you no money, no drugs? Where are you going? No. Yeah, all we've got is one of the parties involved in selling uh, narcotics to our undercover operator. Uh, this one met with the undercover operator and took him for quite a walk. Finally put him down on the stairs. Uh, this one went off uh, for a while. The undercover operator was met by a second oriental male. This one came back. An exchange was made of uh, money for drugs between the undercover operator and this one and we just arrested this one after he ran into an apartment block and we're now searching him for additional drugs and uh, a lot of money. We've recovered uh, nine dollars but it's not sufficient uh, quantity for the amount that the recovery operator paid for the drugs who so were looking for the balance of the, uh, the money. Here's the wagon. We found an additional small quantity of cocaine in that uh, green package. It was found on the floor when we arrested him between the two of them. 
Unfortunately, we can't put it in either one of their possession. Uh, we can't prove that that package wasn't there prior to their going into that little alcove. So not being able to put the cocaine in their possession means we're just going to seize it uh, for an okay seizure. We're just going to tag it and destroy it. Uh, he'll be charged with the trafficking of cocaine to the undercover operator only. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do an initial charge of possession of the purpose for the fact we can't put him in, in possession of that uh, particular green package.